So, hey folks, uh, my name is Dominik Homa, and uh, today with my teammate from ING, Mariusz Górski, we'll uh, share some information about our recent contribution to, to Amundsen. Uh, um, in ING, we are responsible for several um, uh, analytical services, and uh, one of them is um, data discovery service. Uh, as Mark already mentioned, we, we are using um, Amundsen with uh, Apache Atlas backend. So yeah, so it will be um, some stuff related to Atlas. So let's let's look like uh, let's look uh, on our agenda. And um, so um, I will I will share some information about um, this Atlas um, data builder integration. Then I will. Uh, talk about this open lineage integration. And later, uh, Marius will talk about Pandas profiling and uh, some uh, RFC related with, with badges, which we are currently working on. So, okay. are, you sure? are you sharing my screen? Just. Okay, so we, I, I thought I was sharing, <laughs> sorry. Um, Okay, so when, okay, and right now, can you see my screen or yes. not really? It's better. Okay. okay, yeah, sorry. Um, okay, uh, so let's start with this Atlas, uh, Atlas Data Builder Integration. So, uh, so yeah, um, our, um, our first, uh, Amundsen Atlas integration uh, did not didn't use uh, didn't use a data builder at all. So uh, our setup uh, uh, looks like uh, like that. So uh, we push our metadata from Hive um, directly to to Atlas uh, via Hive hook. So Hive hook is some kind like a CDC agent for Hive MetaStore uh, and. Uh, all other metadata which isn't related with uh, with Hive uh, MetaStore was pushed via our uh, is pushed via our custom apps uh, via REST uh, Atlas REST API. So uh, so in this set in this setup um, this metadata uh, and search uh, services. Uh, uh, rely are relying on uh, directly on Atlas API uh, for retrieving metadata and for search services. Uh, in terms of search services, uh, uh, queries um, queries are um, passed by Atlas to to Sol, and then results uh, are returned to, to to search service and. Our first block, uh, our first step to to uh, to integrate um, Atlas more with Data Builder was uh, was uh, some service provide introduced by Marius recently, and uh, it was uh, um, it, it was Atlas uh, meta, uh, Atlas Search uh, Extractor for Data Builder. So thanks to to this um, search extractor, we were able to to um, pull the data from Atlas and sync with uh, to Elasticsearch via data builder, uh, via native data builder process. So thanks to that, we, we might to switch our search backend from, uh, uh, from Atlas to, to Elasticsearch, which uh, uh, in our case which, uh, was much better and much faster uh, than using Atlas directly, and it was our first uh, our first uh, Atlas data builder um, integration. Um, right now, uh, after after uh, few improvements, we uh, we got such state. So right now we are able to. 
to collect metadata via uh, data builder directly into Atlas. So, uh, so our old path, so this push path via Hive hook or this uh, REST API path, uh, are not obligatory anymore. So right now we can uh, pull the data from uh, other um, metadata, uh, metadata sources. So thanks to that, uh, we got uh, opportunity to, to create uh, more decoupled, more elastic uh, flows, uh, metadata flows. Um, yeah, and uh, we got uh, a lot, we got more freedom uh, with our tools. Um, okay. Um, one more thing, um, yeah. Mm, there were some repo uh, which uh, uh, mm, handles um, handled um, data types for for Amundsen, and this repo uh, right now is deprecated, and we move all of its contents to uh, Amundsen core core repository. So right now, uh, uh, all stuff related to uh, Amundsen Atlas integration is in single place, in single repo. Um, okay, next thing, open lineage and data builder extractor. So, so um, for some of us, uh, open lineage project may, be, may seem um, unfamiliar. So I will um, briefly introduce the, this project. Um, so, uh, so, so this, Open Lineage is a Linux Foundation sandbox project, and it's some some kind of um, standard for metadata uh, and lineage uh, lineage collection. And it's uh, the, the goal of this project is to to have a unified schema uh, for describing metadata and data lineage across uh, multiple tools um, to make to make this uh, metadata collection easier. Um, and, and I think it's, it's the main um, purpose of, of, of that. And uh, as you can see of, of uh, the, the right side, uh, there is a stack with, uh, without an open lineage, uh, open lineage standard. So there are multiple uh, applications with, which uh, need to communicate each other. Uh, to send the metadata, and uh, there is a lot of duplication, uh, and there is there is a lot of moving parts. So this um, this net might be easily disturbed and easily break with, for example, even with some version changes or or some of some components. And uh, or the, on the right side. Uh, there is a similar stack with open lineage introduced. So, so here the um, the effort of integration is shared between between multiple components, and uh, integration of of, uh, of them can be pushed in into project. There is no no need to um, to catch catch up. Um, okay, and here we got a. Um, base model of, of this open lineage standard event. So um, it defines some, some concept like, like run, jobs, or, or data set. Uh, in our integration, we, we mainly focus on, on this data set part. Um, so on the, on the right side, there is an example of, 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 this, um, of this open lineage event. And as you can see, it's, it's as formalized as a, as a JSON, as a simple JSON. And uh, th there is an, uh, oh, sorry, there is an, uh, this is an example of some sync job, which uh, syncs one snowflake table uh, into another one. So uh, as you can see, it, it's, 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 it's simple JSON schema. So, so uh, our, open lineage, uh, our open lineage table uh, extractor just uh, parse this data, extract table lineage information from that, and uh, passes, uh, passes uh, pass this information into 
um, into Amundsen backend. And technically, it requires some, some input in form of, of this OpenLinux JSON event. And uh, right now, we are supporting um, this uh, new line delimit delimited JSON as, as, as an input files. And here's an example of, uh, of, uh, of configuration of, of such, uh, such extractor with Atlas uh, um, publishers. Okay, uh, so um, I think at this point I will, I will pass, uh, yeah. Uh, I will pass to Irish. Sure, thanks. So from my side, I have like two topics I wanted to uh, to update you all. And the first one is Pandas profiling data builder extractors, or apart from this open lineage extractor, which we are um, aiming to use for lineage capturing in um, in our data discovery. There is also a matter of like a data quality validation on our platform. So Mm, we have a lot of official tables, those tables undergo certain mm, profiling applications, and those profiling applications basically calculate some kind of statistics on columns available in those tables. Uh, and the, the way we would like to present those in Amundsen, pre previously we are, we are using some kind of reports rendering to show this data, but in the future we are going to use this Pandas profiling extractor, which is already available in Amundsen. We have introduced it as a first column stat stats extractor. And its purpose is to uh, collect the data uh, rendered by Pandas profiling. Uh, Pandas profiling is basically a, a Python library which can be run against any Pandas data frame. And it calculates tons of metrics on those columns. So it has auto detection for that, but um, the main purpose is to calculate like um, descriptive statistics or some uh, calculations on columns and to present this information in some uh, form to the end user. And the cool feature about Pandas profiling is that it also um, presents the data in JSON format. The pandas profiling column stat extract, stats extractor basically takes this JSON um, uh, JSON report, translates it into Amundsen models, and connects this data, um, this column stats data, to um, uh, columns in uh, Amundsen. So data frame, uh, as some of you might already know, pandas um, library can be created from CSV file, JDBC connection. Uh, many different sources can result in creation of Pandas data frame. Mm, we are using it against Spark tables, but for that we need to sample those uh, tables because Pandas profiling yet didn't introduce uh, Spark support. So we need to sample the data, collect the data locally, and run it on some sample of original tables because some of our tables are like really large and we cannot run profiling locally on such large data sets. But the benefit of using it is that it generates a lot of statistics, especially for numerical fields. So it's like 30 statistics for numerical fields, around 10 for text uh, text ones. Uh, so assuming that you have generated uh, such uh, such report, JSON uh, uh, report. Uh, sorry, that's not the right slide. I think. Okay. That's better. Uh, the configuration is available in Data Builder README, but uh, it's pretty basic. You just need to generate the report. So first few lines of this code is uh, basically a pandas profiling process, and then you just feed this uh, JSON uh, report file to pandas profiling uh, column stats exporter extractor. And once you are done with it, this is what you would see in Amundsen. So this is an example of a single a numerical column available in Amundsen after it under uh, was processed by Pandas Profiling, and then the report was uh, fed to a um, Pandas Profiling extractor. So you can see around 30 or 32 uh, different statistics like distinct values, standard deviations, stuff like that, connected to this table, uh, to this column available in Amundsen. 
for column for text columns it's um, like slightly smaller amount of uh, statistics basically these uh, eight ones uh, are available so it was introduced some time ago but i think it didn't have any mention yet that i wanted to like um, present it as something that can be used sometimes users are asking uh, about um, how to collect the column stats information and there is no extra there was no extractor yet so this is the first uh, first introduction of such uh, sort of such extractor from Sun. Uh, and the second thing I wanted to talk about is uh, extending badges browsing capabilities. So we have submitted an RFC like a week, week or two ago, uh, and it intersects with both our internal uh, need for putting more effort into showing badges or uh, surfacing buttons in Amundsen, but it's also, as I can see, even during this uh, meeting, a, a hot topic, and uh, uh, more and more users are asking about differences between tag tags and badges and how to understand how to uh, apply or um, which uh, which metadata. So either tags or badges are um, uh, proper for certain activities. So we. Uh, we are using badges as a kind of like um, very curated metadata. It cannot be uh, edited uh, in Amundsen, and uh, it's like a very official stamp from Amundsen maintainers in the team that this data is, for example, official data or it's in some certain phase like alpha, beta, and so on. But there was no um, real browsing. Um, capabilities in Amundsen so far. So uh, on the landing page, you can only see popular tags, but there is no place where you could see all badges used in Amundsen. And uh, LFC basically um, proposes a change to uh, to browse sections of uh, uh, Amundsen to introduce such view. So basically, uh, so basically, What we've done so far is uh, we want to put more focus on budgets in Amundsen, extend its browsing cap capabilities. And as the first steps, we want to extend home page view and browse view with available budgets and browse budgets uh, respectively. There was some feedback already on RFC to also use uh, badges as a two dimensional data as a future possibilities. This somehow also aligns with the questions related to creating some kind of business glossary in Amundsen and I think that badges would be a good candidate to like uh, grow with this uh, direction. There is a already um, business glossary like concept in Atlas which is basically like a ca catalog of official or, or organization wise uh, metadata and I think that badges would be a good candidate so that's what, what also RFC is about and uh, based on it we started to build like a very small uh, small prototype of how the change would look like uh, i'm not sure let me can change the slide to the next one okay but uh, there's some video playing right now i don't see it okay Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe you can share the Please? link on Zoom chat with uh, the link to the RFC and- Yeah, yeah. probably. So I will do that. Uh, the video basically shown what is already submitted as a, as a um, like work in progress match request. So um, uh, I can share it on uh, as a link. There are screenshots of the proposed changes so you can also see how it would look, look like in uh in the front end the rfc has reached the final comment period stage so feel free to um, to go through it and post your suggestions or any additional feedback that you might have on uh, on uh, on this feature and that would be all i think awesome thank you dominic marius for presenting uh, i want to make sure we have time to talk about two questions uh one is from abel who's at millennium bank and is asking about a month in Entrino, if it's possible to 
have column stats in the UI when they're using Trino in the back? And the answer, and the answer is yes, Lyft deployment used Presto, which is the Trino predecessor and used column stats with that. So it's pretty well deployed and well understood and Marius is extending that with Dominic at ING. So that should work. Uh, the second question I wanted to make sure we get a chance to talk about is from uh, uh, Vicente. Vicente, you want to ask your question around Atlas? Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for presenting. Yeah, my question was regarding Atlas as a backend, uh, whether you had some performance issues, because uh, at least before a month, we tried Atlas, Delivery Hero, and they didn't work that well. Uh, was quite so, uh, I don't know if it was because of the nature of our tables with many columns, or, but yeah, we weren't so happy about it. Yeah, so I would say that Atlas performance is its main drawback, as I can see. So uh, the way we are collecting metadata is also like kind of uh, maybe in, uh, not proper for Atlas because we have like hundreds of thousands of entities in Atlas, and that also contributes to its like low performance. But that's one of the reasons we switched from Atlas Search to Elasticsearch with Atlas Sync, because the search was very slow. So it was like, on average, we had monitoring that said it was like five seconds to just conduct a search. So we switched to Elasticsearch, it's below 200 milliseconds now. Yeah, mm. we had similar metadata. feeling like, some yeah. two tables were taking like one second to load. It was like, um, you know, yeah. So, so for table retrieval is slightly better, but uh, I would say that the major consideration, like my, my major drawback for us as well, would be the Atlas performance. That's why we also have like a lot of uh, initiatives for slimming down the metadata we we are populating in Atlas. So only the really necessary stuff goes there. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'll, uh, I, there are a few more questions I'll ask. I'll request Junda from Brex to ask this question and the others, if you could follow up on Slack and ask the question, that would be great. Junda, your question? Yeah, yeah cool, thanks. So I have a question regarding you know, Pandas profiling. Uh, do you, uh, you know, use Pandas to profile a table and write to neo 4 directly? Because we are building something similar like you know, summary stat service, but we are trying to get into a different service. So I want to know whether you build a different service for Panda profiling or, you know, just use a mouse to serve the stats to other services as well. Uh, so we are doing two, two things currently. One is we are calculating pandas profiling, save them as HTML reports and connect them to the tables in Amundsen. But uh, what I've shown is basically to use Data Builder to utilize those stats to populate Neo4j with like Amundsen models for column stats, basically. Not sure if it answers the question. You can yeah. follow with me on Slack so I can give you some more context as well. well. Yeah, thanks. Well, Marius, Dominic, thank you for taking the time to present with us and thank you all for joining. Thanks for being a part of the community. Uh, we'll see you on Slack and hope to see you in about another month. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you all.